Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in TNO as we are exploring the United Siberian Salvation Committee. Russia has fallen. That is the core idea amongst those on Nikolai Fedorovich Artemanov's United Siberian Salvation Committee, an organization composed of former bureaucrats, soldiers, and sailors stranded in Chukotka and the Chumkatka Peninsula where the mainland rendered an apocalyptic disaster and the rule of the mad regent finally lessened Artemanov's committee has turned to a solution some may call brilliant and others may call utterly mad with the support of his government. Artemanov has held referendums amongst the populace for annexation by the United States of America as an overseas territory, personally seeing to it that the referendums turn out positively. The will of the people in hand has turned across the sea to the U.S., seeking for an intervention as the only way to save the only slice of Russia that he believes can be preserved. As a U.S. territory, Kamchatka will not be independent, but to him it will be free, and that is what matters. And we're currently at four, and let's go ahead and... Try them out, my friends. The 51st state of America? Let's hope so. And we're led by Nikolai Artemanov. So if you are like to read about him, please go right ahead. But the first event... <clears throat> SOS, I see a lighthouse. This declaration roused an unusually large hurrah, and for a good reason. In a clumsy first attempt to find a harbor along the coast of eastern Kamchatka capable of taking them in, the American vessel had nearly run aground several times, ending the sailors closer and closer to panic and possible mutiny. Each time, the captain becoming the target of silent frustration at last, the tensions dissipated as a brilliant light of a lighthouse, clearly makeshift but serviceable enough and certainly a sight for sore eyes, guided them to the destination they had been searching for. Awaiting them was a large but crude harbor, likely built recently for the specific purpose of receiving aid such as that carried by the American ship. As they pulled into the harbor, a crowd of Russians looking largely malnourished but no less jubilant for it, cheered for them. Come on, John, let's not keep them waiting, one sailor called out to another as the ship anchored. At the sight of the absolute gratitude of the people before them, all the irritations and tensions of the sailor were forgotten and replaced by an earnest and genuine desire to help them survive and rebuild their lives. They haven't given up yet, so neither can we. Now, I do know that apparently once you do all of these nations, the post Tabaritsky warlords, and we get to like the number for and finish epilogue. And then you can have sandbox mode. And then you can basically try to unify Russia once again. And you might you might get unification events. So I might do a video later on that uh, includes all the nations. But we'll see. There's no guarantee, but we will see sometime. Into the abyss. In a black tawn night on the Bering Sea, beneath the thunderous wrath of a storm, a lone Russian ship struggled against the ocean's gluttonous attempts to devour her. She was an old model, a transport ship from some forgotten convoy, bruised from 20 years of hard work and rusted from 30 years of abandonment in a far eastern harbor. Her floorboards cracked with every malicious crash of a wave against her hull, and new leaks let loose their payload above freezing water at the cue of the metallic, screeching sounds of plating tearing. The wind howled, laced with razor blades, sheet, or sleet, around the captain's reddening and frostbitten ears as he shouted orders over the rowering of the tides and the death rattle of his craft. It was too late, of course, but Ivan was never a man to give up on his word. He was going to bring him, his family, and the rest of the refugees into Alaska or die in the heart of the sea. Dying at sea was a blessing compared to what would be in store for them back home. With another roar of spitting steel, the ship began to sink rapidly. Ice-cold water was lapping its way over the deck, and the crew and the passengers atop it were already beginning to tumble into the frothing mouth of the Arctic off the steepening slope of the deck. The ones below, Yvonne chose not to think about what had happened to them, taking in one last shaky breath. He pulled on a stiff upper lip and allowed himself to keep the latter half of his promise. The Saint Nifon was dragged under and her last cries of pain ended along with the crews. The orthodox graveyard outside of Anchorage was grimly silent under the cold sun. It was empty but for a priest and a single journalist. Four blank gravestones marked the final resting place of the sailors who'd been found. The priest gave the four half-frozen men and women their last rites and the journalist scribbled down yet another story of Russian corpses recovered on the beaches of Alaska amongst the wreckage of the St. Nifon 4. Oh boy. And we actually have increasing academic base, research facilities, and poverty is getting slightly worse. Industrial equipment is looking very, very nice. Uh, industrial experience is pretty good. Not bad overall. Freedom's flame. At a small port on the east side of Kamchatka, a mid-sized cargo ship bearing the Canadian flag pulled in and anchored, with dock workers already gathering to help unload it. This had become something of a routine for the locals and sailors alike, working together well to unload the cargo over the ship, now more precious than ever coal. With newly f new quality firewood increasingly scarce and highly priced after everything had happened to the Russian landscape, coal had become truly invaluable as a cheap and relatively widely available heat source to the ordinary people of Kamchatka, and of what remained of Russia in general. The sailors, as friendly as ever, even helped to unload the cargo themselves to lighten the load of the local people. Despite the dif difficulty of communication between the two groups, in times like these, a reason shall should not have to be asked for to be received. This was, after all, a humanitarian aid mission meant to distribute rather than sell the precious cargo. There was no reason for them to act any other way than humanely. Perhaps humanity is the most precious resource of all. 
Yeah, it depends on who you ask. And we're building anti-aircraft guns. Gotta love what the AI might do. But we do have the National Spirits of uh, Light from the East. And this is a nation that gives us a ton of weekly stability but living for tomorrow. Nikolai Artemanov squirmed in his chair uncomfortably, staring over his desk past the journalist sitting across from him and instead through the frosted panes of his office window. Snow was still coming down, dusting the streets of Anadir and a thin coat of pure white that, could still, that still failed to erase the horrors the city had been subjected to. How could he heal this country from being behind a cheap coffee-stained desk in the frozen middle of nowhere? Uh, sir, Mr. Artemanov, came the voice from the American cutting through, Nikolai's drifting thoughts. You were talking about why you formed the USSC. Nikolai nodded, clasping his hands together on the desk and forced a smile at the camera, glittering at him from across the room. Yes, right, well, quite frankly, it was the only thing I could do, he replied, his thick accent not doing favors for already weak grasp of English. Mm-hmm. Hum, his interviewer. So what exactly do you mean by that? My people were suffering, and I had the power to help stop it. So I did. Well, surely you could have tried to move somewhere better, yes? Somewhere warmer, somewhere safer, and bring as many of your countrymen as you could fit in a boat. At a certain point, one has to give up. Nikolai paused, and his gaze once more shifted away from the camera and out the window. Sucking in a deep breath, he turned back to the thousands, maybe millions of eyes watching him through their TV screens. I refuse to give up on my motherland. She can still be saved as long as the people continue to fight. We will just have to keep living it for tomorrow. Things will get better someday. When have they ever, though? Oh, boy. I got some anti-tank equipment. Not too bad, but not too much of a concern for us. That is a long word. Or two words. Wow. And a beautiful, strange land. L.A., the city of angels. The city of Sardom and... Sardom? Stardom and fame, the city that breathes the glamour of its state of California, it was nothing short of a paradise to a Russian such as Artemanov, who would find it impossible to imagine such a metropolitan sprawl grow on the despoiled soil of Mother Russia. The majesty of its skyscrapers, the glitz of its bustling streets, it was so foreign and odd, yet so enticing and magnificent. So much so that there were a few close locations of men, uh, the, the, the man nearly bumping into a streetlight or person just by how enamored he was with this place. As part of the government delegating funds to commencing humanitarian efforts in the Kamchatka region, Nikolai Artemanov was invited to the States as a guest while the first of many aid fleets were sent to were to set course for the Russian coast. The experience was most welcomed by him, for the soothing warmth and diamond shine of L.A. certainly beat the icy storms and rocky geography of Siberia as much as he hated to admit it. One could just close their eyes shut and let themselves be swallowed by the sea of sounds and visuals that shape this kingdom of liberty, this haven of humanity, and Artemanov would just do that. As he rolled around and went dark with his shut lids, Nikolai could hear the siren song purring into his eardrums, the beeping of cars, and the clamors of passerby serving as a symphony to which she seduced his battered soul to stay and remain in this urban paradise. He could feel the city's ethereal arms wrapping upon his heart coated with ice, melting away its casing to be to let it beat free from the terror that besieged it in Russia. He would no longer need to worry about the horrors that lurked east at Muttered. He would not even worry of missing any food to eat or people to see, a home that awaited him with great arms. Nikolai could smile to the sweet words, sweet words, and mellow promises, yet home was not what his spirit sought most. The siren's call was strong and charming, but that of Mother Russia's was stronger and passionate. For as much as this city was prosperous, he still had his promise to keep for those lost souls seeking freedom in Russia. The angels sang to the Savior's coming triumph, but if you enjoyed this video, or... Please leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. If you want to figure out how I actually got to this point with all the Warlords, you can check out the first link in the description below with my Taborski stream and video. But thank you for watching, and have a great, great American rest of your day.